So my name is Hugh Montgomery, I'm Professor of Intensive Care Medicine at UCL where I direct the Centre for Sports and Exercise amongst other things. Um, I work as a consultant in intensive care medicine clinically at a hospital in North London, so I'm a clinical and an academic. Climate change, as we said in the first uh, Lancet Commission on Health and Climate Change, is the greatest threat to human health of the 21st century and that's because the climate change impacts on health are interacting with the damage we've already done to the planet, which is already threatening our health at scale. Part of that relates to the number of people on the planet. It took over 4 billion years for us to reach the first 1 billion people on the planet in, nine, when in 1823. It took us a little over 125 years to add another billion, uh, 33 to add the next, and we add another billion every 12 to 14 years. The problem though isn't the fact that we're now well over 7.5 billion people on the planet, it's the fact that each of those people now consume so much, and it's, it, our impact on the finite resources of the planet um, is far too extreme um, to be sustainable and that threatens human health and survival. So if we think of those human impacts you could think about consumption of resources of tin, mercury, lead, antimony, phosphates or anything else. You could look at pollution but if we just take a few simple metrics, um, water for instance, we consider that pretty much to be infinite in its resource. It rains, we use it, it, we put it on crops, it evaporates or transpires or it soaks down and goes into rivers again or we feed it to animals, it comes out the animals, goes back and it's an endless cycle. And whilst that is true to some degree, the problem is that we can't sustain our agriculture at the current rate without draining groundwater at a faster rate than it refills. And we supplement that by draining aquifers, particularly fossil aquifers, which might have taken 10 million years to fill. And once they go dry, that's the end of them. If we look, for instance, at crop production on the North China Plain, the wheat production for over 600 million people, that's 0.6 billion people, is dependent on a fossil aquifer. When that goes dry, there won't be wheat production for over half a billion people on the planet. The fossil aquifer that attends the High River, the south of China, that's hundreds of millions of people's worth of rice production dependent on that as well. And even the Ogallala aquifer in uh, North America is responsible for the grain production across eight United States. So water is a threat and when those things run dry we're in trouble. We're growing crops pretty much everywhere you can grow crops. If you think about it you can't grow it where there are cities, you can't grow it on oceans so the Arctic Ocean is out, you can't grow it at high altitude on poor quality land, on steep land where it's too dry, where it's too wet. The only place you can then go when you need to grow more crops is to chop down rainforests and we're doing that at the rate of about 20 soccer pitches a minute. When you till soil, again we think that's an infinite resource, but every time you till soil you break up the upper surface and 1% of it blows away. So think of places that have been tilled for 100 years and there isn't any topsoil left. And that doesn't come back in a matter of a few years, that takes hundreds or thousands of years to come back. So we may soon have large areas of where we're currently growing crops that we can't grow any crops on at all and neither will we be able to for a very long period of time. That won't be sold by fertiliser, that's just the fact you don't have the crops. So we don't have the land, we don't have the water and we're destroying rain for us to grow more. You can see just on those metrics how much trouble we're actually in. So if we think of the range of damage we've done, overfishing, overhunting, polluting, destroying essentially soil, water resources, and ecosystems, we degrade ecosystems. And ecosystems are very complicated networks uh, of organisms that interact. And as soon as you start lowering biodiversity to a particular degree, those ecosystems collapse. So we are already, if you look at the Living Planet Index, which is published by the Zoological Society of London and the Institute of Zoology amongst others, um, we're down between 70 and 80% on the total number, for instance, of marine vertebrates in the planet since I was eight years old, which was in 1970. So that's 70 to 80 percent. And we're well over 60 percent reduction in numbers of vertebrates on the planet overall in that space of time. We are destroying the ecosystem at an absolutely extraordinary rate. That's an addition, for instance, those 20 soccer pitches of, um, an hour of rainforest we're degrading. We as humans sit on the top of a very, very delicately balanced pyramid. We are dependent upon that complex ecosystem for our very survival. And we are hacking away at the base of this. 
It's not just the numbers of vertebrates that are going down, it's the number of species. We're now losing between four and eight species um, an hour to extinction. So we are living through the greatest, biggest and fastest mass extinction this planet has ever seen on the fossil record by comparison, by factors of around 10,000 fold. And we're not slowing that up, that's getting worse every single year. And that's before climate change even hits. So this isn't just a question of a few animals disappearing. This is the complexity of an ecosystem which forms the foundation for our own survival.